<laughs> He'd invite her out to eat, but that's not the way it worked in that day. He returns and begins to speak to his father and says, Father, I believe I have found my bride. I believe I have found the one that I want. She's beautiful. She's lovely. She has great eyes, personality. She comes from a good family. I found that out too. Can we set up the meeting in your house with her? And the father said, absolutely. Yes, son, if you believe this is the right thing to do, if you believe this is the one that you've chosen... So the first process is the selection of the bride. May I tell you how that applies to me and you? Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. <laughs> you understand that we didn't even know who he was. We were aliens. We were Gentiles. But he said, I found you. I spotted you. I sent my Holy Spirit, my Eleazar, to your heart to convict you of your sin and draw you to me. That's process number one. Now, the next stage happens at the father's house. He gets the bride. He invites her to come to the home. The young girls, of course, are waiting on the outside to anticipate what happened. They sit at a table. Now, remember this. This stage of the wedding happens sitting at a table. The three main individuals, of course, there are witnesses and others, but the three main individuals we'll show you are the the bride, the father of the son, and the son himself. Now, this is literally a formal part of the wedding ceremony. You must understand, we would call this engagement. They would consider this to be phase one of the actual wedding. Now, here's what happens at this particular arrangement. There will be a price that will later be given and gifts that will be given, which we will talk about for a, in a moment. But this is the, the, the purchase price of the bride. This is where we decide how much she's really worth. This is where we decide it's called the mohar in Hebrew. And how many of you know that there was a price that had to be prayed for, paid for Christ to choose us? That price, ladies and gentlemen, for you are bought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. So just as a price will be paid for this woman, Jesus paid the price for you and I. Hallelujah. To purchase us back to God. Suddenly, the betrothal process begins, and it begins with what's called a ketubah. We have a similar representation on the table right now of what a ketubah is. The ketubah is opened, and this is where the process of the marriage officially starts at the table. The word betrothal comes from the Hebrew word, you're seen, and it actually occurs about 12 months before the official consummation of the wedding takes place, at least on the average. This is called the marriage contract. What happens is this, the ketubah gives the obligations of what the man expects from the woman and the woman expects from the man. It gives the obligations. It also names the price of the bride. It tells you what the price of the bride is. It is a process, ladies and gentlemen, that legally binds the man and the woman together as one. And I'd just like to show you that the ketubah that we have here, if I may hold this up, is a little bit more detailed. Marriage contract ketubah, bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, bride, the church, Christ offered his life, crucified on the cross for her sins. The token given, the symbol of dawn, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, the wedding of Jesus Christ. He will never leave her nor forsake her. He will deliver her from all distress. He will answer her prayers. He will protect her. He will feed her with eternal food. He will love her with an everlasting love. He will return for her when he has prepared a place for her in the Father's house. The, pre the pledge of the bride says she will set herself apart from the world, sanctify for her bridegroom. She will use her time wisely waiting for his return. She will become pure, spotless, and free from sin. She will be faithful to him alone having no other oh, hallelujah suitors for her heart she will be ready to go with him when he returns somebody give him praise and glory <laughs> a 
at the wedding. This ketubah, which of course is much smaller than the one that we have here. And you must understand that the ketubah of the Old Testament was the Torah. The five books of Moses was the marriage contract. And the Bible, hold up your Bibles right now please. The Bible that you hold in your hand, the 27 books of the New Testament from Matthew to the book of Revelation are more than just a word from God. They are the word from God. They're more than just words from the Apostle Paul. They are a covenant contract. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know what your ketubah is, you're holding it right there in your hand. For he's given you the promises of what he will do for you. And he's told you what you will do for him. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you even under the end of the world all he said to do was love the Lord thy God with all your heart all your soul all your mind your neighbor as yourself hold up your Bible and say this is my wedding contract oh hallelujah 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 so the marriage was not official till the ketubah was signed and it's been signed it's laid back on the table as a reminder now of the promises which have been given you must understand there's one process that has to tie in with this. She has read it. She has looked at it. But she has to agree that this is the man she wants. And she thinks about it for a moment because you understand it's going to change her life. She may lose some of her old friends when she accepts this man. There may be some people that get offended at her because she has to live a different lifestyle now than she lived. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there are some people that will be upset at you because there may be some friends that you'll have to give up. There may be some people that won't understand. Why did you choose Christianity? So she understands it's exciting to be married. It's exciting to have these promises. It's exciting to get the man of her dreams, but she also knows there's a personal price to pay. And she thinks about it and finally she makes her decision as they look at one another. He's waiting for her to see what she's going to say. And she realizes at that point, I will choose this man. And he will give me his life and I will give him mine. And the Bible tells us that with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Notice all of this happens at the table. Oh, but there's one more process that is so interesting because it ties in perfectly with the new covenant. There's a cup on the table. It's a silver cup because silver represents redemption. Oddly enough, the cups used it. Passover are also silver and the wedding cup is silver now the contract has been given the contract has been signed the agreements have been made but they seal it with the drinking of a sip of wine from the cup of redemption for silver in the Bible represents redemption they drink from the cup which indicates that they're going to share their life together. They are one when they drink from the cup. Even though there's no consummation of the marriage for perhaps 12 months. And even though they will not see one another nor date one another for 12 months at least. They know they are married in the spirit. Now. This is the reason why when Joseph was espoused to Mary, they went through the entire process of what I'm saying right here. But did you know that when she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit, he thought about putting her away? Putting her away is a term used in the English translation of the Bible for divorcing her. Why would he have to give her a bill of divorcement if they'd never been officially married and consummated? Because this was an official contract. They were engaged. They were married. If it was broken, it could be punishable. So now it's been sealed. Jesus held up the cup after the supper saying, this is the cup of the New Testament of my blood which is shed for you. When Jesus held up that silver cup and those disciples drank from that cup, they were saying, we understand what you're doing. We understand that our ketubah is the word of God. We understand that you're going to have to seal it somehow. 